Okay, so now we'll have a look at the hyperbola and its graph. We've already encountered it when we just looked in the previous video on how functions can be uh, translated, moved around. Okay, so what is the hyperbola all about? Well, the hyperbola has the basic shape or the basic form in its function formula as y is equal to a over x. That's the most basic one, especially when a is equal to 1. Okay, so y is equal to 1 over x. And what it actually means, or in a different way of looking at this relationship, is by multiplying um, x times y. In other words, I'm multiplying both sides with an x. And that gives me an answer of a. Okay, so it's the coordinates all the coordinates where when I multiply them together I get a so let's look at at when a is equal to 1 okay so if we have y or x times y is equal to 1 which numbers can we use well we can use 1 and 1 1 times 1 so when x is 1 and y is 1 that point okay we can also use the point uh, 2 times a half gives me 1 so when x is 2 y is a half there so that's another point or a half times 2 in other words when x is a half y is equal to 2. So there's three points already. Let's go to the negative axis. So what if x is equal to negative 1? Well, negative 1 times 1 gives me negative 1. So negative ti 1 times negative 1 gives me positive 1. So uh, the x is negative 1 and y is negative 1. And the same goes for the other values. If x is negative 2, y must be negative 2. So negative, uh, sorry, negative a half. So that's another point. And when x is negative a half, y will be negative 2. So there we go. There's only a few points. But that now, in the end, if I, if I do a bunch of points, um, and you'll just have to take my word for it now, but uh, actually don't. Go and test it for yourself. We get a function that looks like this. And you'll notice two very distinct things about this function. The first thing you notice is that it seems to be tending towards the, the y-axis and towards the x-axis, but it actually never reaches it. We'll look at that uh, y in just a moment. And the other thing you notice is that there's this, this pretty um, symmetry there. So if I were to draw this line down here, there would be symmetry and this is the line y is equal to negative x or if I draw sim uh, an axis here as well that's, there's also symmetry down this axis that's the axis y is equal to x so we see one we have asymptotes which means uh, lines that the graph tends to but it doesn't reach them and we also have symmetry axis along here so why do we have the asymptotes. Well, for one, let's just go back to the original form of fx equal to 1 over x. So for now, let's just consider a to be 1. Why is it that we actually x can never be equal to 0? x never gets to 0. And we actually know why, because we, we are not allowed to divide with 0. But why is the graph then going up like that? Well, it actually makes quite good sense, because if I take 1 divided by a half, how many times does a half go into 1? Well, it goes in 2 times. Now, if I divide something smaller into 1, how many times does a smaller thing go into 1? Well, it will go in more times. So the smaller my divisor becomes, if that becomes smaller, the result will end up becoming more and more and more. Like if I divide um, 
it with 0, 0,1, I'll get 10. Or if I divide with 0, 0,01, I'll get 100. Or 0, 0,0001, I'll get 1,000. So as I'm dividing with a smaller number, the result actually ends up becoming larger. So as I'm getting closer to 0, my output becomes larger and larger. But what about the, that's if I'm coming from this positive side. So I'm dividing with a positive a half. I'm dividing with positive 0, 0,1. So what if I divide with a negative value? Well, obviously I'll just then get a negative answer. So if I divide with negative 0, 0,5, I'll get negative 2. Negative 0, 0,1, I'll get negative 10. So as my uh, divisor gets smaller, but as a negative number, my result will be larger but also as a negative number in other words a very large negative number and that's why it's tending to the negative y uh, infinity so that in the end if I were ever able to divide with with zero I will actually get the answer of infinity which is impossible I can never get the answer infinity actually um, it's impossible to get there so that is why I have my vertical asymptote because x may not be equal to 0. What about my horizontal asymptote? Well, this time, it's my y value that seems to be struggling to get to 0. Why can't my y value get to 0? It's trying to, but it never gets there. Well, if you think about it, it is when x gets larger and larger. So let's take something like one cake. And one cake divided between two people, in other words, one over two, which means x is now equal to two. Every person gets a half. But what if I divide it between four people? This time, every person gets a quarter. Or every person gets an eighth. Do you see how the larger my denominator or my divisor becomes, the smaller the, the result is? Will that result ever be zero? Well, think of it this way. If I bring, if all eight people bring back their piece that they got, we get a whole cake again. So if I divide this cake between every person in the world, there's the world. Okay, well, that's my best attempt at the world. If I divide this one cake with every person in the world, you will probably get nothing. It would look like nothing. Okay, You might not be able to see it, but when every person brings back their piece, in the end, I still have to get back the whole cake. So what you got can't be nothing, because nothing added is nothing. Which means even if x becomes infinitely large, well not infinitely large, but almost infinitely large, zero, 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 the one divided by that big number is not exactly zero, but it's very close to zero. It never gets to zero. And the same principle applies that when x becomes a negative value, I'm just now dividing with a negative every time. Okay, so that is why the asymptotes. Let's just look at another type of shape I can have. I can also have my parabola to look like this. Okay, it used to be in the first and the third quadrant. Now it's in the second and the fourth quadrant. When will this happen? Well, that is when x times y is equal to a, but a is negative, smaller than zero. Okay, why? Because now x is positive, because we're on the positive side of the x-axis, but y is negative. And a positive number multiplied by a negative number will give me a negative number. Positive times negative gives me a negative. Okay, I don't like that. A positive number times a negative number. Okay, same goes for here. A positive y times a negative x will give me a negative number, which is what I have. So finally, let's just look again at how this graph actually can be moved around. But let's look at how it's moved around by looking at some examples.